Hey, thanks for joining me today. What we're doing uh, on the old dragster today is I've finished up the X braces. Now, these are the braces that are mandated by NHRA to help control this chassis to keep it from going into yaw as it's going down the track. That's so when you turn right, it turns right instead of just turning left and turning into a banana. What I've done already is I've installed the fuel tank. It's cleaned out, blown out the whole nine yards. And what we're gonna do is hook up the main fuel line in this front bay assembly. Now, there's a couple tricks that I've learned along the way that I'm just gonna pass on to you guys, but this is what we use to actually connect the two metal pipes together. There's actually more than two. There's, let's see here, I've got this in one, two, three, four different sections actually, including the Y pipe that goes to the pump. But one thing you don't want to happen is you don't want these things making contact with each other. Um, if it does that, what it can do is it can give a little bit of a burr and that little burr comes off that aluminum right there and will actually go into the fuel system. Once it travels through the fuel system, it'll make its way all the way down through this pipe, down through this, the pipe under the deal, up through the white pipe, into the pump, comes out the pump, goes through the barrel valve, into the engine, and plugs the nozzle, either in the head, the blower, the manifold, and then boom. That's right. One little chunk of aluminum can plug a nozzle and cause that to happen. So in order for that to happen, there's a couple measurements that I make. It's real easy. On this particular deal here, I've already got the piece mounted, um, the silicone hose piece mounted on the main part that goes underneath the driver's seat. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure it and mark it on a zip tie. Then I'll take that piece, put the addition of how, much, how far I want it away from the other pipe, and then mark that on the pipe. And that way I know how far that pipe needs to slide into the other sleeve. Now, the reason why you do this, again, if these things butt heads together, this things will cause a flake of aluminum to come off and we'll have issues. Now, you don't want them too far away or this thing can actually suck these things shut and then it's gonna starve for fuel and it's gonna do the same thing, it's gonna blow up. So, in order to get this thing to slide, I use a little bit of brake clean. You don't wanna use like a silicone or something like that because then it stays slick. Once this evaporates, then it's gonna be silicone right to anodizing and that thing's not gonna move. As a matter of fact, it'd probably be kind of a bitch to get back apart. And the other thing you don't want to happen, you don't want this thing to come apart because all that fuel, you know, 15 gallons that's in the tank actually will come out and it'll go right towards your driver and you better hope and pray that it don't ignite. The other thing is too, is that just nitromethane in general, you know, it's not good to have on your skin or anything else and it will light you up. So I've got my front piece, which I call towards the driver's apartment in place. And now I'm gonna be able to, you know, split the difference between the tank and the other piece of pipe that we just put on. Now I'll go ahead and finish tightening up the clamps on these other two pieces. So I always offset my clamps and I always keep the clamps pointed down towards the ground. Now, why do you do that, Rob? Well, there's a couple things. The, these clamps all have like a splice area, what you say, or an overlap of where it runs on top of each other. So you're just gonna put those, instead of lining them up with each clamp, you're gonna offset them. That way, so it doesn't have a, fuel have a way of traveling out, you know, it has to go and make a turn and come back out the other way. You're just not lining them up. Next thing is, the reason why you point them down because if the body's on the car, when it's up on the projects, you can do a quick check on these things from the bottom side. That's it. You're just trying to make things simple as possible. So I'll get my sets uh, oriented the way I want, go ahead and slide them on the pipes before I actually uh, mark these things. That way, so they're all ready to go and you don't slide that thing on and then fight it back off because you forgot to put the clamps on it. So I'll take my silicone piece, roughly it's eight inches. I'll split it so I know where the center line is. And then I'll go ahead and mark the pipe where I want the silicone to end at. That way, so when I'm sliding this on one way or another, I'll know that I have the proper amount put inside of this pipe. Next, I'll go ahead and mark the other end. You know, roughly we're doing this uh, as a visual. 
just so that we know for a fact that we're gonna have that gap in between the two metal pieces of pipe and not have that issue of butting each other together. This fuel line's about two and a half inches in diameter. And when it's just like from this tank to the pump, it holds three gallons itself. But that's the kind of supply that you need for these dang things. So what I did really is I just took some tape and put it around the pipe. That way I know how far to slide it back. That way in case the mark comes off, like when the silicone hose is coming down, things like that, it's just kind of idiot proofs it or whatever. So I'm gonna slide the silicone hoses on both ends of this pipe, put it back in the car, and then I'm gonna try like hell to slide them back off the pipe onto the other pipes and then we'll get them all blocked in there. So people ask like, how many gallons per minute do these things actually burn? Well, on some parts of the track, this thing's got 90 gallons a minute going through it. That's 90 gallons a minute going inside the motor. If you check that back on some of my other videos, you can see what one cylinder looks like on a test bench. It's, it's really pretty incredible. Now, the more fuel you can shove down its throat, the more power it makes, because that's where these things get their power from. They get it from the nitromethane. Nitromethane carries its own oxygen. And let me tell you what, if you can pack it in there and then you can light it, it's gonna make a big bang. So sliding the hoses on, it, it's, it's really pretty difficult. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It sucks, I don't like it. Anyway, but I got them on. I've got them in position where I need to go. So I'll go ahead and orient my clamps. And you can actually see here where there's a bulge area that's trying to keep these things from sliding apart. But I've seen people put new cars together and not have good connections here. And this pipe come off and it dumps that whole amount of fuel right on the track. Anyway, I wanna explain a couple things here. So this right here, this is the vent for the tank. Yep, that hole inside that is the vent. That hole in the very front is how we tow this thing around, and normally there's a wing that sets on the front there. So that's how we hook up to the car when we're pulling it around. The hole there in the center, that right there is for the steering shaft. Goes all the way through the tank, right up here to the little rack that's up here, then that's what turns the, turns the wheels. So now we'll pop the cap off here. I wanna show you the inside of this thing. Here's our vent tube. Yep, that's right. That tube is solid, goes all the way and connects to a tube that goes inside that other piece that's in the front that I showed you, and that's how it goes to atmosphere. Also, there's actual pressure that's put on top of this tank as it's going 300 miles an hour down the track. Now this right here, that weld, there's a baffle that's inside this tank. That baffle goes the length of the tank, and what that baffle does is it helps control the fuel on launch, and it also plays another part, and I'll get into that here in just a second. But Anyway, these tanks are pretty complicated. There's a whole shelf that's in there, but there's also some holes in the back to where fuel can get towards the back. But when this thing is sucking that much fuel, you wanna be careful about where it can get the fuel and not enter air along with it. So when I get done with everything, I go ahead and put a label on the tank, let everyone know that, yep, I did it, and it's done, it's race ready. So here I'll draw a really crude, uh, fuel tank for you. This back piece here is the outlet, which you just saw, which is gonna to go towards the fuel pump. Now this here is the shelf that's inside the tank. And I say a shelf, when you look at the top of it, there'll be a couple cutouts in the back, but basically it's a complete shelf. So when you're pouring it in, it's coming down and going around the shelf, going down towards the bottom of the tank. Next, I'm gonna show you that vent tube and how it works. So. Here's the atmosphere in the very front. It comes through the tank and then lands up there into the filler cap, just like what we talked about. Now, if you think, if we didn't have this thing vented, this thing sucks so hard, it would just collapse this tank into nothing. And this happened before when people didn't uncover the fuel vent for these things. It just like would suck it completely shut. So under acceleration, what happens is, is that that fuel underneath here is shoved towards the back. It can't slosh up towards the top. It has to go to the inlet. So now you have this great head pressure uh, on the inlet of the pump. And what that does is it helps it from cavitating. This is what cavitation is. Cavitation is say, when you have a bathtub full of water and you un pull the plug out on that thing and you start seeing a swirl of of basically air getting into the drain itself, 
that is cavitation. So here, let me kind of draw it for you. Here's a tank drain. And what happens is if it doesn't have that head pressure, which is the atmosphere and the weight of the water on top of the inlet, like when the tub's full, you won't see that develop, that tornado effect develop. But as it gets lower and the less head pressure is on top of that inlet, then it's able to go up and suck air. And when you have air in the system, that is not fuel. And so it leans it out, it cavitates, and it'll blow this thing up. So now that all the fuel lines are in, and I've explained to you guys what the shape and why the fuel tank looks like it does, I'm gonna go ahead and put all these stringers in. So if you understand what these stringers do, it's basically it's boxing this thing in to where the uprights can't pass each other. Does that make sense? So when you're pushing real hard one direction and you've got you know 2,000 pounds of downforce on the front and you got you know 7,500 on the back and you're turning one direction, you want this whole snake to stay straight. You want it to react what the driver is inputting into it and that's what's gonna keep this from happening. Now on this particular car, it was built last year and we built it out of 048 thick tubing where currently a lot of the stuff is 049. So that actually makes this car a little easier to drive because it, the tubing's thicker. Thanks for watching. Now we're gonna install this puppy, so stay tuned. The control system.